Hey everybody, in this video, we're gonna get started deploying GKE Autopilot. Now, first things first, I do just wanna show the code here and I'm gonna go through this on the UI because we gotta learn the manual way before we can do the automated way. However, if you wanna do this with Terraform, this is the code right here. I'll have a link in the description. But pretty much what we wanna do is we wanna enable Autopilot to true. Now. Here's the thing, you're gonna see something else on line nine here, this empty block called IP allocation policy. The reason why, and I'm actually, I'm, I'm creating this cluster as we speak, as I'm testing it out, but let me go ahead and just scroll up here so we can see the reason why I have that empty block. And I can't find it, but I do have a screenshot of it. So let's go ahead and take a look at that really quick. I just gotta pop open Twitter here just so I can pull it up. Okay, here it is. So. Notice here how it says error 400 max pods constraint on node pools for autopilot cluster should be set to 32. So really what this is saying is when you're using GKE autopilot, the max pods on each node pool would be 32 pods. However, as I was Googling around and just researching this a little bit, it looks like the GCP team or whoever's working on this is still working on it. Uh, unfortunately, since 2021. So I don't know when this is going to get, you know, fixed and stuff, but the way to fix it or the workaround rather is to ensure that you have this IP allocation policy block right here. Now, with that being said, let's go ahead and go back to the browser and we'll learn how to deploy this GKE autopilot cluster manually. Now, first things first, under Kubernetes engine and clusters, I'm gonna click on create. And then you have two options here as we talked about in the first video, you have the standard, which are your worker nodes, and then you have the autopilot option for the serverless Kubernetes. So I'm gonna go ahead and click configure. And we have a few options that we need to go through first, the name, so we'll say autopilot test uh, one. And then, you know, you could choose the region based on where you are, and then you would go to networking. Now, with networking, you're gonna choose your default VPC, or if you have another one, and then your node subnet. Again, this is gonna be all based on how your cluster looks. Now, the important piece here is how you're accessing your cluster. Are you accessing it publicly or via a private cluster? Now. As we all know, it would be best if you could access it via a private cluster and you had a VPN going into your environment where you could access the cluster versus just having the cluster public. But again, it's all gonna depend on your environment. And then you have the ability to set the pod site range or address range for your pods and the service address range for your Kubernetes services. All right, then you can click next for the advanced settings and you have a few different options here. now. First, you have an automation window here, which essentially says, or rather gives you the ability to specify maintenance schedules. You can enable the Anthos service mesh if you want to. You can enable some security. So for example, Google Groups for RBAC, if you don't have another RBAC solution or rather another OIDC solution, of course makes sense. Encrypting secrets at the application level, that makes sense as well. And then disk encryption here. And then finally, you can manage some metadata if you'd like, which is you know really just the description of your cluster and any labels. Next, you can go ahead and you click Review and Create and click the blue Create button. Now, of course, this is gonna take a little bit of time, but we'll go ahead and we'll wait for this to pop up for us. Alrighty, and that cluster is officially up and running here. I'm gonna click on an Autopilot Test 01. And as we can see, the cluster is up. We can see all the details associated with it. We can see any storage. So like for example, any CSIs that automatically come with the autopilot cluster as we can see down here. And then we have some observability pieces here. And if you enable manage Prometheus, that comes in out of the box. And then same thing for logs. We can see any logs that are happening inside of our cluster. So the cool thing is all of this stuff is on by default. And something else that we can do here is we can, of course, connect to our GKE clusters. So if I click on the connect button here, I could go ahead and I can copy this command line and I can access it via my terminal. And that's how you can get started with GKE Autopilot. Thank you so much for watching.